In this video, we're going to talk about comprehensions and generator expressions in Python. A comprehension is a special bit of syntax that can appear almost anywhere an expression list is allowed. It is recognizable by the keyword for in the comprehension. So you'll see something for something, and you'll know that that's a comprehension. The simplest syntax for the comprehension is as follows. So we have expression for and we have a target list in, and then we have some expression list. Note that this is the same syntax as the for statement. This looks exactly the same as the for statement. Okay. The expression here, however, is the body of this for loop, and it is a single expression. It's not a statement. Okay. What specifically this means depends on the context of where this comp comprehension is introduced. I'm going to show you generator expressions. As we cover lists, dictionaries, and sets, we're going to see examples of set, list, and dictionary comprehensions as well. A generator expression is parentheses with comprehension on the inside. This is a generator expression. It gives you something that's exactly like calling a generator function. However, instead of calling code that has a yield statement inside, it's going to yield the expression for each item in this uh, expression list. So let me give you an example of a generator expression. You can try this out in interactive mode. So we're going to say g is equal to in parentheses. We're going to have i star star 2, which is the exponent. So this is taking i and raising it to the power of 2 for i in range. Uh, let's say 10. Okay. Keep in mind that when you have a generator, you just call, it's an iterator, so you can just call next on that. So next g should give us the first item in this range, which is 0. That's assigned to i. And then we take 0 and raise that to the second power. That's just going to give us 0. If we call it again, then we're going to get the next item in the sequence, which is 1. Assign that to i and then take i and bring that to the second power, that's going to give us 1. And if we do it a third time, then the next item is 2 assigned to i, and then 2 raised to the second power is going to give us 4, and so on. You can also use a comprehension in a function call. What this looks like is you have a function that can take a single iterable as an argument, and you're just going to put the uh, co the uh, comprehension on the inside. So let's say for a minimum of i um, mod 5. So taking i divided by 5 and get the remainder back. For i in range, let's say, starting at 1, going up to 8, and having a step of 3. Okay. And so what this will do is it will generate the sequence that comes from this, and then pass that as the iterable into the minimum function. Note that with this style of syntax, you, can, you can't use any other parameters. If you wanted to allow for other parameters, then you need to use a generator syntax. So this is an example of the sum function. And I'm going to pass in a generator expression, where I take i, raise it to the second power for each i in the range of 10. And so this, between this parenthesis and this parenthesis, is a generator expression. And then I'm going to specify the starting value as 8. So that's how you would pass multiple parameters into these functions. A comprehension is made up of several for blocks and optionally um, if blocks. You must have one or more for blocks but you can have zero or more if blocks. An if block is just if and then some condition. And a for block looks like the first line of a for statement. So you have for target list and some expression. Let me give you an example of generating a sequence of all of the ij indices to a 3x3 three three matrix. So ij for i n range 3, 4, j, n, 
range three. And this will generate zero, 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 one, zero, two, and then one, zero, one, 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 two, and then two, zero, two, one, two, two. What if blocks do is if that condition is not met, it will not return that item from that sequence. So it's a way to filter out things. In order to understand what's happening, you can take the comprehension and break it down into raw code. Let me give you an example of what that might look like. So here's a very complicated comprehension and I'll just kind of label the things rather than actually fill in the blanks. So we have some expression for, and we're gonna have target list one in, and we have expression list one. And then we're gonna have if, and we're gonna have condition one. Then we're gonna have for uh, target list two and expression list two. And then we're gonna have another four uh, target list three and expression list three. And finally, we'll have another if and we'll have condition two there. Okay, so this comprehension would basically break down into the following code. For target list one and expression list one. And then we have an if, if, oh, we have an equal colon over here, if condition one, and then we have four, for target list two in expression list two, and then we have an, another four target list three and expression list three, and then finally we have an if condition two, and then finally we're going to like yield that expression. Of course, a comprehension this complicated is typically better written as an actual for loop or better yet, a for loop that iterates over functions. You can use comprehensions to replace map and filter. So here's an example to replace the map function. So if we had x star star two for x in range 10, that's the same as map lambda x x power power two x star star two and then range 10. And to replace the filter function we could have uh, i for i in range 100 if i percent seven is equal to two is the same as filter lambda i i percent seven is equal to two, and then range 100. So these two are exactly the same. You can see why we might prefer to use comprehensions. Uh, it allows a lot more flexibility. It also seems to be a little more clear in what you're doing. So nowadays people tend to use comprehensions and not map and filter. Comprehensions are a neat little trick in Python. Uh, it's fairly powerful. And if you're familiar with SQL, you should be getting like an SQL vibe from these things. However, I don't recommend using them. If you're going to use them, use them sparingly and only use them in the simplest of cases. Typically, when I write a comprehension, I either end up going back to the code and removing it completely because it's so trivial and useless, or I end up replacing it with a full blown for loop with if blocks inside. There's also a not for noobs vibe that comprehensions have. So people that come from C++ or C or Java, when they look at Python code, they, they tend to understand what's going on. But when they see a comprehension that breaks their, their illusion that they actually understand what the code is doing. And also beginning Python programmers are not generally familiar with comprehension. So if you have beginning programmers on your team, or if you have some programmers that aren't very familiar with Python, it might be best to avoid comprehensions altogether. And again, I'm gonna bring them up when we talk about lists, sets, and dictionaries. So you'll see the full uh, syntax for all possible comprehensions in Python. Hey guys, thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, be sure to ask below or join me on Discord. Take care, bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video on the theory of Python by Real Physics. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell, like and share this video. You can find me on Discord or support me on Patreon. Links are in the description below. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.